but the KSL investigators found millions of us are doing just that. Yeah, and while the business world contemplates the pros and cons of bringing people back into the office, KSL investigator Matt Gephardt has been looking at the dollars and cents working from home is costing workers. Come on, Charlie. It's the beginning of another workday for Jody Ware. Since the very beginning of the pandemic, pretty good because he got like 85 emails. Jody has been earning his paycheck from inside of his West Jordan home. He says That's working right. from home has not cost him a lot. His bosses sent him home with a laptop, extra monitor, other equipment, plus they give us a little bit of allowance for internet because it has to be a, it has to be at a certain rate. Jody says his biggest out-of-pocket expense has been a $100 office chair, and it's an expense that is easily offset. I don't have the commute anymore. I'm saving a whole bunch of money on fuel. Um, you know, even groceries has been cheaper. Now, while working from home has been a win for many, the KSL investigators found it is kicking other workers right in their wallet. Four out of 10 remote workers in one study said they spent between $100 and $500 on their home office during the pandemic. 12% of folks spent more than $1,000. And the National Bureau of Economic Research found that renters working from home spent roughly 7% more on housing because of the need for extra space for an office. For homeowners, that number around 9%. But experts say the real expenses can be a lot harder to calculate. Sure, you already had a home with a room for an office, but now your company is getting that room rent free. Sure, you already had home internet, but now your company gets to use it for free. Sure, you already paid to cool your home, but now your company is benefiting from your personal expense. And that particular expense researchers found climbed by 40 to $50 per month on average for workers during last summer. University of Utah School of Business professor Glenn Kreiner has been studying working from home costs since long before the pandemic forced us indoors. And Kreiner says a permanent wide scale shift to work from home gives workers some leverage. It, there's a difference between here's something I want and I'm willing to incur the cost versus something that's being forced on me. Say, so, wait a minute. I gotta rethink the, the, the parameters of this deal, right? Another potential cost, promotion. In a pre-COVID study, researchers found that working from home lowered promotion rates by 50%. Workers feared they were passed over because they were not in the office. Kreiner says managers must get past that bias by developing criteria to evaluate remote workers. What's the quality of the work? Is it on time? Are they mentoring peers while at home? Figure out what those important criteria are rather than that sort of gut check of I know these folks because they're around me all the time. Whether it's promotion or more tangible costs, Kreiner says now is the time for companies and their workers to talk about which expenses have shifted. Look, here are the actual costs that I'm incurring from working from home. Which of these seem appropriate for the company to be reimbursing me for? So right now, any of the people that you see here today... Is Here's a place where dispatching the workers have saved some money. CHG Healthcare's headquarters in Midvale. Jeff Freeman, Senior Vice President of Culture and Engagement, showed me how they're seeing big savings in everything from office supplies and utilities to cleaning services and food. Uh, we have a full, full kitchen uh, that has not been in operation for the past 14 months. But the hands-down biggest savings? Construction. CHG was planning to expand, build a whole new additional building to house all of those on-site employees. We've uh, put our, our third building that we we're in the process of building. We put that on hold uh, at, the, at the onset of this pandemic. I mean, and that's got to save you some money. You're literally not building a whole building. It, it, it does, right? It does. Freeman says he wonders if they'll ever pull that pin out. Before the pandemic, CHG allowed about 150 people to work from home, but after being forced to send all 3,000 staffers home and actually seeing their business thrive, they've decided to work with the about half who don't really want to come back, at least not full time. Now to work out how to share the costs, CHG is providing things like computers, chairs, and all the other physical amenities that they would have if they were in the building. Well, most of the amenities. You're not like sending everybody home with their own treadmill to stay in shape. No, no, you no. You have to no, come no. back to the office you for that. You have to come back to the office for that. Freeman says they're bringing back their workforce on a hybrid approach with jobs split between the office and home. Meanwhile, the money saved, he says, they are reinvesting in their employees, going into remote work tech, training, and collaborative spaces and designs. 
we know that this model is here to stay. Yeah, live here from my home office, also known as my utility room. You know, if you find a roundabout way to do your job from home, experts say there's a right way and a wrong way to toss, talk to your boss about it. Some tips attached to this story on our website, ksltv.com. Mike? I'd love to be in the room when you talk to your <laughs> boss about it tomorrow. No, I'm very happy, very satisfied. <laughs> I figured. Great answer. All right, good information there. Love it. Thanks, yeah. Matt. Well, we've talked about the signs of a drought.